How's it going everybody? Welcome to PS Ready, my channel all about PlayStation. This is the weekend video here on the channel where I cover the last bits of news that slipped by me in the middle of the week. In today's video, I've got three topics to cover. The first one is that your PS5 Pro is the best PS4 ever. Second on the list, we're gonna talk about the plates situation with the PS5 Pro and when you can pre-order the new Chroma collection for your PS5 Slim. And finally, there are 60 confirmed games that'll get PS5 Pro enhancements at launch. I picked out some of the best ones that I I think are going to be cool to play if you missed them or you played them at launch realized they were not finished and put them on your shelf to come back to later all right let's talk about this first news story here which is that your ps5 pro is about to become the best ps4 ever so we know that there's two ways that the ps5 pro is going to get better graphics and better performance than the current ps5 one of them is through pssr that is what i'm most excited about just because i played on pc for a few years now and you know there's a double-edged coin double-edged sword double-edged coin. There's a double-edged sword situation going on here because when DLSS was introduced, I immediately was terrified because when you're be using an upscaler to get better frame rates, I was like, oh, so developers are going to release their games unfinished and then tell people who have mid to high range GPUs uh, to use DLSS if the games aren't performing right. And that's exactly what happened. We started getting games that were unfinished and then developers would say, oh, if you're having issues with frame rate, just use DLSS or FSR and that is a terrible solution because you should finish your games before you release them because they're not free and they're they cost money like I don't, I don't feel, this isn't even a moral argument this isn't even an argument in the first place finish your games before you release them can you imagine going to see into the spider-verse and it's not finished and then they say come back next week and you'll see all of the effects done no you can't because that would never happen i don't know why in video games that has become the norm and i have to like be like oh but you know on the one hand game development takes a long time and it's hard so they don't finish their games before they release them i'm not defending that that's stupid you should finish your games. Sorry, getting back on track here. DLSS is awesome even when games are finished because it gives you a better way to anti-alias your games so the edges will be much cleaner. The lighting will look a lot nicer. Everything will just look how it's supposed to, which is kind of crazy because it's using machine learning to upscale the game. And instead of using regular anti-aliasing or volumetric lighting or whatever that stuff is that you use in games, you'll get a better result from using DLSS. So knowing that PSSR is more similar to DLSS because it's hardware based instead of being software based like FSR, which has had terrible results on the PS5 this generation. I'm really excited about that feature. But something that's going underreported is this game boost feature, which is coming forward from the PS4 Pro, where even if a game doesn't get a patch for PSSR, the PS5 Pro is going to be able to take a look at that game and say, well, you know, I could clean up some of these rough edges. I could get the frame rate smoothed out. I could just make it a better experience overall. And and if the developer doesn't go out of their way to tell the PS5 Pro not to do that, it's going to work in pretty much every PS4 game. And that's great because there are so many PS4 games that still don't have even PS4 Pro patches or PS5 patches. The one I'm looking at, you guys know, is Bloodborne. That game's frame pacing is terrible. The resolution is super low. The actual frame rates are all over the map. And, you know, for some reason with the PS4 Pro, Sony basically told the console not to let the game take advantage of the boost mode that the ps4 pro had but this time around things seem a little different where the ps5 pro is going to do it anyway regardless of what the developer says unless they specifically go out of their way to tell it not to so unless sony has some remake in the works which i am becoming increasingly skeptical of just because we've heard rumors about it for years at this point and it's never come to fruition we could finally get decent performance in a game like bloodborne or you know those mid-budget double a sort of games that are on the edge of being triple a games like lords of the Fallen. They're hard at work on Lords of the Fallen 2. They're a much smaller studio than something like From Software or any of these other big AAA studios. So in the case that they don't want to go back and bake in a patch for uh, PSSR to work or, you know, they don't want to actually clean up the game to let it take advantage of the PS5 Pro, maybe the PS5 Pro will be able to get the performance mode looking and running better, which would be great. We're going to talk about the 60 games that are getting, we're going to talk about some of the 60 games that are getting official support later on in the video 
but again, I'm mostly curious about the games that aren't getting official support because we're in this situation where developers are facing layoffs all the time, of course, so they're losing staff that could go back and make patches for the PS5 Pro. Other developers don't really care. I mean, this is a PC issue, so it's not really relevant, super relevant, I would guess, to the PS5 situation, but Dead Space Remake, which is free right now on PS Plus Essential, EA released that game in a terrible state on PC. It was in a similar state on PS5. Unlike the PS5 version, they never went back and fixed the PC version of that game. So where you go up to doors on the PS5 version, you always see a little bit of a frame drop down to like 57 FPS when the next part of the level is loading in. On a PC, no matter what hardware you have, you'll see a hard stutter where it looks like the game actually stops for two seconds while it loads in the next room. And because Dead Space takes place entirely on a ship, you're going between rooms constantly. So when you play it on PC, it's a stuttering mess. So there are plenty of examples of games like that that are over on PS5 as well. So I'm really curious if this boost mode that the PS5 Pro has, in addition to PSSR, is going to be able to make these games look and run better than the developers actually put the work into making that. And you know, I'm just getting increasingly sick of seeing excuses being made for this constantly. Like I understand that these are companies and that the executives are making the shots, but even when developers would respond with that dead space situation on the Reddit, they would make it look like that there was no issue at all. Like they'd say, oh, it must be your hardware. It's not your hardware. It's the fact that the game is coming out broken and unfinished and you're selling it for full price at launch, hoping people will buy it and either not notice the major flaws with it or just wait three weeks to a month to get the patch. And then by that point, it'll be on sale for 50 or 40 bucks. And then the people who waited a long time to actually play the game will get the better experience. I feel like the people, well, everyone should get a good experience, of course, but I feel like the people who uh, buy it on day one for full price or pre-order it should get the best experience and then everyone else will after that because the best experience will have happened at launch. I mean, I could list a hundred games, but I'll just talk about one more, Jedi Survivor. I was so excited for that game. I mean, I love Star Wars. I love Jedi Fallen Order. I know that game had issues at launch. I ended up playing it on PC because it was so terrible on the PS4 Pro, but Jedi Survivor was even worse somehow. You had pop in, the quality mode was never at 30 FPS. It would always drop into the low 20s. If you played in performance mode, you you were jumping between 28 FPS and 55 FPS. It hardly ever ran at 60 at all. And then you look at Final Fantasy 16, that game's performance mode is still all jacked up. It doesn't ever run at 60 FPS unless you're in a battle with a minor creature. I like, I'm just sick of the excuses, honestly. And I really wish that they would do something about this over at Sony. Say, hey guys, maybe you should finish your games before you release them because people aren't buying them. Because if you didn't see, all these companies' stocks are falling. People aren't buying games day one and it doesn't surprise me at all considering the fact that you're constantly rewarded for waiting a year for the game of the year edition that's going to cost 50 or 60 bucks and have all of the dlc and a finished product so it's nice to know that the boost mode is there on top of pssr to make these games feel more finished than they are we're going to be waiting a long time for developers to wake up and realize this is a huge component as to why people aren't buying games and executives as well so in the meantime it's nice to know we have this great feature coming along with with this brand new console. Anyway, that brings us to the second news story of the video today, which is a really shocking move from Sony. It's like a two-parter here because we're also gonna talk about the Chroma Collection, but uh, the plates for the PS5 Slim, so if you've been collecting any of the few that they've released over the past year or so, all of those will work just fine with the PS5 Pro. And that was surprising to me, A, because it's a consumer-friendly move and clearly Sony is immune to doing stuff like that lately. And B, uh, the, the, the consoles are different sizes. I mean, if you look at them, they're very similar similar sizes. They're not exactly the same, but it looks like the PS5 Pro might be a little bit taller and a little bit wider, but they've accounted for that extra height with that three slat design where like the middle of the console is three black slats. So it stands to reason that the PS5 slim plates would work on the PS5 Pro. Thankfully, Tech Radar reached out to Sony and it was confirmed by Sony that the plates will work. So if you were excited about the Chroma plates and then thought about maybe the fact that you pre-ordered a PS5 Pro and the plates might 
might not work, uh, they're gonna work. But that brings us to the Chroma Collection, which covers both dual senses and plates, and these will work on your PS5 Pro. So if you don't want that disgusting white color on the PS5 Pro, and you're interested in these Chroma colors, which I'm gonna tell you about in a sec, they'll work on your PS5 Pro, which is awesome. So the three colors available are pearl, indigo, and teal. They're metallic, but they're also like pearl colors. So if you move the console, depending on how the light is hitting it, you'll see more colors. The pearl, it looks white when it's in flat lighting, but if you shine a light on it and then move the console, it'll bend with like blue and purple, which I think would look pretty cool. You know what a pearl is, so it's gonna have a pearl effect. And then the indigo is a darker blue, so it'll also have a purple and greenish banding look when you move the console or your lighting moves or your head moves and you get a different angle on it. And then the teal is a greenish color that's going to have very similar banding. I think these look really cool. I'm always into non-metallic metal looks. If you don't know what that is, it's a way you can paint stuff to make it look metallic if it's not. I think this is something cool because it's not something you could really easily do yourself, like make a black plate for your PS5. That's super simple. Krylon spray paint. Make a gray plate that matches the PS1 edition. Also very simple. But getting these non-metallic metal colors is a much more difficult task. And I think the dual sense looks really cool, especially the pearl one, which is all white. It's like a stark white with that cool color banding. A lot of people say that they'll get dirty, but I gotta be honest, I have the dual sense edge and I use the white dual sense that came with my PS5 Slim all the time on my PC. Both of those are super clean. So maybe if you're having issues with your controller browning or getting stuff in the buttons, just invest in some soap and wash your hands. I wash my hands all the time. I, I go to the gym, I wash my hands when I'm done. I'm about to make lunch, I wash my hands. I get some tuna for my sandwich on my fingers. I wash my hands and then my controllers don't get all dirty and grimy. But when my brother comes over, uh, he uses my controllers and there's a sticky film on them for months after and I can never get them off. So that makes it good that I own like 15 dual senses because my brother has one that's like relegated to him for when we play co-op because he has the sticky hands of a four to five year old and it's disgusting despite the fact that he's 30 years old. Edward, if you're watching, go wash your hands. Anyway, there's a weird situation around the release of these items because two of the colors come a lot faster than another color. So if you want to pick up pearl or indigo, you can go do it right now. Uh, it started October 3rd, which is before you're seeing this video. Last time I checked, they were all in stock, so they don't seem very popular. But if you think they're cool, they should be in stock. If you pre-order pearl and indigo, they will ship on November 7th. And if you pre-order teal, you got to wait till January of 2025. I think it's like January 25th, maybe uh, the end of the month. I want to know what happened at the factory that caused all of these to come in late. But yeah, if you thought the teal looked the coolest, just go in knowing you're going to be waiting a little bit longer than the other two colors if you do decide to pick these up. Anyway, that brings us to the third news story of today's video, which is just a few of the games that I think are going to be benefiting from PSSR and other PS5 Pro enhancements. You can look up the whole list. There's a Reddit post and Tidex, a longtime Twitter user who has been a fan of PlayStation that I followed since I was in high school. He also put out a link to the list. So if you want to see the full list, go just Google it. You'll find it very easily. But the first game I'm very interested in is Alan Wake 2. I played that game on PC. I never want to touch it on PC again because it's only on the Epic Game Store, which I don't have installed on my PC because it makes your PC run slower. I bought it on PlayStation 5 as well, and I pre-ordered the Collector's Deluxe Edition that's a physical version of the game. I'm excited to play that on the PS5 Pro because it runs at 60 FPS and uses ray tracing. That game looks amazing. Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster is getting a PS5 Pro update. I don't know what it's going to do because this game runs really good at 60 FPS 99% of the time and also has really good resolution features. If they can get it to run at 4K60, I think that'd be awesome. If you haven't played it, I can't believe I didn't talk about it. I got it early. I beat it really quickly. I loved it. I thought it was a great remake of Dead Rising. Biggest issue I have with it is, man, they made it so much easier. You get so much XP in this game, it's insane. You're level 15 by the end of the prologue, which it took me about half the game to get there in the original version, which I just replayed. One game that's really gonna benefit from PS5 Pro, I think is Dragon's Dogma 2. I don't think it's gonna get actual lock 60 because the issues are CPU related and the CPU didn't get a very big bump with the PS5 Pro, but just increasing the graphical look overall in that game, I think is gonna go a long way because it is a very good looking game. I hope they can get it to 60. I'm just not holding my breath because the CPU was the main issue. 
Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the one that I'm most excited for because I stopped playing it about halfway through and I am working on getting the Platinum. I just like couldn't deal with how muddy it looked when you get to the halfway point of the game. I appreciated that it stayed at a lock 60 FPS, but again, the graphics just degrade as the game goes on. So I'm excited to be able to play it at quality mode at 60 FPS. It's like I'm being rewarded for waiting, which I talked about at the beginning of the video. Both Last of Us games are getting an update. I genuinely don't know how they could make these games look or run better, so I'm excited just to see it from morbid curiosity. Lies of P is one of my favorite Souls likes that isn't made by From Software, and it's a good looking game, so I'm excited to see how much better it looks with the PS5 Pro mode. My favorite game of this entire generation, Resident Evil 4 Remake, is just incredible and anything they can do to keep it running at a lock 60 all the time with higher quality graphics would be great. I played it on both PS5 and PC and being able to run it at 4K high settings on PC. It's one of the few games I've ever noticed a very stark difference in playing on my PC and then playing it again on my PS5. I feel like the PS5 Pro is just going to bring it into that PC category and make it the perfect remake that it was just at the level of. Like it was on the line of a perfect remake and getting a PS5 Pro patch is going to push it right over. Rise of the Ronin runs like dog shit on the PS5, so I'm glad that's getting a PS5 Pro patch. Another game I paid full price for and bounced off of pretty quick that I do intend to beat. Again, being rewarded for waiting. And finally, my favorite game to about Jedi Survivor is getting a PS5 Pro patch. Will this be the time when we can call the game complete? It remains to be seen. I highly doubt it, but I hope so. So yeah, a lot of games I personally haven't beaten. I'll be able to play for a little while while I wait for Sony to actually announce the 15 million games they've been working on with their first party studios. Uh, let me know if you're going to play any of these in the comments or if I missed any that you're excited about. Anyway, guys, as always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.